Hi, this is Dr. Kalkbrenner, and welcome to my video on computing McDonald's coefficient omega in SPSS version 28. And I mention version 28 of SPSS intentionally because previous versions don't have this option to compute coefficient omega. So in all likelihood, this video is only going to be helpful to you if you're using version 28 of SPSS. And in my view, this new addition of being able to compute omega via point-and-click option is a major contribution to the measurement literature in particular for computing reliability or consistency of scores because McDonald's coefficient omega isn't really anything new or it's been around for decades however until this version of SPSS version 28 its computation was elusive or it was it was complicated to compute which might be the reason why it's typically underreported in most counseling journals and the purpose of this video is to give a brief demonstration of how to compute coefficient omega in SPSS. So I won't talk a lot about the differences between coefficient omega and coefficient alpha and when it would be more appropriate to use one over the other. However, I do talk about that in another video, which I'll put down below above the comment box. So basically, or in a general sense, some of the advantages of omega are that it's more robust or it is stronger. It stands up to assumptions in the data that alpha is vulnerable to. So essentially, omega is really just a generalized case of alpha. In other words, if all of coefficient alpha's statistical assumptions are satisfied, then alpha and omega will be the exact same number. However, oftentimes data sets don't always meet all of alpha's assumptions, in which case coefficient omega is the more favorable option. So the thing that I think is really cool about SPSS version 28 is there's now a point and click option to compute coefficient omega. So here I have some fictitious data and let's imagine this is a scale for detecting symptoms of anxiety and there are eight world low ranked items and there's an overall composite score computed for all eight items. So if we want to compute the internal consistency reliability of these eight items or the reliability within the test items, we have a couple of options. And the most common option, or the one that's used um, more often than ever across all studies in the social sciences, is coefficient alpha, which many of you might already be familiar with. So to compute alpha, we go to Analyze, Scale, Reliability Analysis. And we have all eight of our items here that measure the anxiety. So I'm going to move all of them over into the item box. And the model or the reliability estimate automatically defaults to alpha. I'm going to click OK. And then here are here is my coefficient alpha value for these eight items. And I'll also provide a link in the comment box below to an article that gives guidelines on how to interpret what these reliability estimates mean. So if you get a coefficient alpha of 0.91, if we round, um, that would oftentimes be considered a fairly strong reliability estimate for coefficient alpha. So now we can compute coefficient omega just as easily or in a straightforward point and click way as we could alpha. So once again I'm going to go to analyze, scale, reliability analysis, but this time I want to change under the model option. I want to click omega instead of alpha. Then all I do is press OK and then here is my McDonald's coefficient omega estimate. And if you notice here these values are, are pretty closer. Alpha and omega are pretty similar. And in my experience, and also other studies in the literature support this, oftentimes alpha and omega are pretty similar. However, this isn't always the case. There are some times when there might be a more notable difference between the estimates. And in those cases, most of the time, you're better off going with the omega estimate. Because again, it's a more robust estimate to, than alpha, or it's not vulnerable to alpha's assumptions. And, and my recommendation is to report both alpha and omega when doing psychometrics or really when computing reliability for, for scores on, on an attitudinal measure because the alpha is typically the more popular one so it will allow you to compare your alpha estimate to the findings of other investigators and then also omega you might introduce a more robust reliability estimate. Thank you for watching this video and I hope that you found it helpful.